Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, my guess. Maybe you could say hypothesis, but I'm just going to say guess as to why there are gay people. Why are there homosexuals? I have nothing against them. Some of my best friends have been gay. But I've always wondered, how is it that someone can be born into a body that they feel so uncomfortable in and so out of place in? How does this happen? How does this happen that you're in a body where you just feel like it's not you? You're uncomfortable in your own skin since the get-go. I've often wondered about this, like how, how does this happen? Anyway, I've come to a, a kind of guess that maybe it might be down to something higher than bio biological. Um, and it's got to do with reincarnation. If you know what that means, um, maybe you're a believer in it, maybe you're not. Anyway, reincarnation, to break the word down, re means again, in, okay, going inwards. Karn, karn is like the old word for flesh or meat. And then A-T-I-O-N will make it a noun, right? So re, re again, in, coming in, meat, meat, body, flesh coming in again into the flesh, reincarnation. Um, I think it's got to, to do with reincarnation and I'm going to explain why. Okay, if I take myself for, for example, I'm 42 years old, there's my cat, and up until now, I think I've got to know myself pretty well there are parts of me that are very feminine, but there's certainly parts of me that are very, very masculine. There's parts of me that are not really into the typically uh, proposed female pastimes. And there's quite a, quite a big part of me that truly appreciates more male pastimes. I've noticed in myself that I am, there's something about swords, swords and bows and arrows, especially swords, sounds strange, but just, just run with me here, run with me. There's something about swords that makes me feel comfortable and familiar. walking through museums or seeing certain TV shows, there's certain elements of certain TV shows where I see the weapons they're using and the armor they're wearing. And there's a very instantaneous feeling of familiarity with it. An instantaneous feeling of like, yeah, I've been part of that. Like a flow and a feeling that I, I, I would know how to use it, how I would, how to use it and how I'd bear it, bear it. Now here I am, this 42 year old female in this current day and age, why on earth would I have that feeling for swords? Like archaic, archaic medieval gear, not even medieval, maybe Definitely 16th, 15th century, maybe earlier. Now, I've always had this feeling ever since I was really little. When I was really little, I had a natural affinity for sort of stories from medieval times. I just really, really loved them, the way the houses looked. There's just a sense of f deep familiarity there. And I have no idea why. I mean, we've always, gr our family has always been living in sort of pretty average traditional modern homes 
um, the first one we lived in was not very nice, but I mean, it was, it wasn't old fashioned and it wasn't anything special. I've never lived in Europe. Um, anyway, anyway, so this is just one aspect, one thing that I'm telling you. There are other things as well that I feel like I know quite well. I know quite well, and but I've never done them. I've never done the action, but I, I would feel like I think I could do that. That that's I, I need like maybe two or three goes, but I think I could I could get into that again. Again, really, when was the first time? It's not this lifetime. There's a few things. There's a few things that I know or definitely feel. Things that I've never done before, but I felt like if you gave me a bit of training, I'd catch it really quickly. Maybe you think I'm talking up my my head. Anyway. Anyway, so this is my my take on it and this is what's kind of led me to thinking maybe reincarnation is true because that that is the only thing that would explain my natural affinity for these things that i'm describing to you that is the only thing really that i can think of like i've done this before but maybe not in this meat suit <laughs> not in this body but maybe in another one before another one before and I definitely feel like I have not always been a female before because there's just certain things that I'm I feel like I could do quite well maybe if they had female warriors or something before but I don't think that was run-of-the-mill stuff I just have a definite feeling of knowing before what it's like to be a male I definitely feel the feeling that I have been a male before and I was probably quite good at what I did. I don't know how, I have no proof for you. I have no proof for you. And I can't back up or justify anything I'm saying. I can't. Um, oh, if you see this here, this is just, I'm, I'm, I'm giving a light on my face to make it like better for you to see me. So I'm just holding my, my phone in my hand with the light. Um, yeah, so coming back to, to reincarnation, I actually think, I, so, so I, I, I subscribe to the idea of reincarnation and probably, you know, like the average soul, maybe some souls are younger than others and some are way older than, than some, than a lot of us. I don't know about myself. I think I might be medium to... I don't think I'm one of the oldest souls, but I feel like I've definitely been around a while. I've seen stuff, I've done stuff, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and I get the distinct feeling that I've been male more than once. More than once. I, when, when I was in my 20s, I, I even... <laughs> I had a friend who, who said that he could do past life regression. I was like, really? Okay, cool. I'll, I'll try that. Anyway, we did it. And I don't know if it was just like sucking something out of my thumb, or but the, the, the images and, and the ideas and what was coming back, maybe it was just my own imagination, but what was coming back to me was I was living in medieval times. I was a farm hand. I was living on a farm, but it was not my farm. I, w I lived in a little hut. A little hut with, just barely held together with, with bricks and, I guess, mortar and mud, thatch roof. And my body was big. I was big and tall. Very, not really tall, but stout. I was a stout person. And my skin was really white. And I had dark, sort of gingery, sandy hair with a beard. But I was a largish person and I got this distinct feeling of myself at the time as being illiterate, being uneducated, because it felt like in my brain, my world, my world was small, limited. I, I knew a f a very little about the world. I knew within my scope of what I had to do in my job 
take care of the farm, but that was it. Hmm. I remember this quite clearly, and I was this farm hand. It was just me on this farm. I was taking care of it. It wasn't mine. I was doing the work. And I had a little boy, a son, who was about eight or nine running around. Little dark-skinned boy. Not like dark, like a, like a black person, but like tanned. And I got a feeling at the time that this person who was my son in this life was my boyfriend at the time in back in 2003 or 2004 like the personality who was my boyfriend in this this life at that time we were together he was my son and I was a father I don't know how to justify this to you or I mean you don't even have to believe me you might think I'm totally crackpot anyway so that was what I got out of this regression. I remember the weather. The weather was overcast. The landscape was sort of pretty bland. Autumn, late autumn, like almost going to late autumn. Pretty bland, overcast. I got the feeling distinctly that I was around probably England somewhere or maybe somewhere else, but I was I didn't know much and I was, I didn't get the feeling that I could probably have read at that time. I, I just didn't have the extensive scope or awareness. I, I don't know how, how to explain it. Anyway, so that was the second kind of thing that made me think, I think I've been on this earth more than once, more than a few times. And more often than not as a male. It's, I, I'm just going to tell you now, in this lifetime, I'm not, I'm not gay and I'm not, um, I'm not lesbian or anything. I've always been straight. I've actually tried to be lesbian and it hasn't worked out. Um, I'm just naturally straight in this life. But I can see what men see in certain women, their attractiveness, and that, I can see that. I can easily identify and understand it yes so that's my uh the, that's my ex particular experience in understanding and connection with reincarnation so if i've lived here before if i've lived on this planet multiple times in different bodies and when i die in one body then maybe i go off somewhere take a break and Re, reassess and then come back down and get born into another body. Uh, you know, fine, I, I think I'm on board with that. But then if this is happening to me, this must be happening to loads of people. Reincarnation is not commonly spoken about and it's, it's not in the Bible per se, but maybe the born again idea, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so it must be if it's if I think it's happening to me, there's a pot, of course it must be happening to other people. But then if you look at a, a planet over the years that's had certain, I mean we've been through so much. We've been through wars. We've been through times of peace. We've been through economic instability, and we've been through great periods where there have been huge obstacles for females in the past, right? If you think about it, in the last 2,500 years, there's been so much uphill for female. Being born female on this planet is not easy. I think I've had a pretty good run this life, but probably before. Oh, God. So limited you're limited with the jobs you can choose you're limited with your freedom you're limited with your economic freedom own i think only now how how long has it been we've just we're crawling out of that quagmire now anyway so think about it this way so there's been all this tumultuous uh, history before us and people 
are born and they die and their souls carry on and they're born into new bodies and then they die. But what happens if you come to a juncture in history where females are being taken out big time? Females, female women, human women on the planet being taken out. Whether you're thinking about, I don't know, the witch burnings, loads of women dying then, especially around medieval times, right? Loads of women dying then. But they were dying at, at older ages, right? Let's just say teenagers onwards. The witch burnings, the average witch, being female witch being burnt at that time was probably teenager onwards, right? She wasn't a little baby. But if you think about this century, when has there been such a dearth or a lack of female bodies, female women on the planet, women on the planet, well, if you look in many economic circumstances, if a family could only take care of one or two children in this century, in this century, if a family could only take economically take care of one or two children, we should say just one child, and a son was born, that's usually been a very good thing, right? It's like, ah, oh, he can inherit the name and he can continue the business and the family uh, way of life, etc. But when a female's born, it's always been like, well, it, it's usually been, up until now, it's usually been like, oh, a female, okay, what do we do with her? We've got to raise her and then get her married off somewhere, right? Yeah, yes, okay. So that was in the 1800s and maybe before that. Females have kind of, yes, they've been the bearers of children, but besides that, they've often been a, what do you call it, a burden on the family kind of thing. Yes, they help out at home, but ultimately she's going to go off somewhere else and marry a dude and, and help with their family. So all the investment you've put into her, you've basically lost it at a later stage, right? Now, if you go to the beginning of this century, roundabout, if you look in Asia, The amount of killings of little infant girls was through the roof. Because at one point people were only allowed to have one child. So if they had one child, they almost always hoped that it would be a boy. And if it was a girl, go drown it somewhere, go get rid of it. Somehow just get rid of it somewhere, right? And this was huge. Round, I could say from the beginning of the century up until, I don't know, 50 years ago, even 40 years ago. I don't know how long it's been going on. But if you look around Asia, this was huge. It's not something people like to talk about now, and it's kind of like a... It's such a sad element of history. If, if we could have on paper the sheer numbers of little infant girls that have just been, that just aren't, aren't here. They aren't here because they were killed at birth. In, in China at the moment, um, there are so many men in my generation, Chinese men in my generation, who cannot get married. Their culture tells them to get married. Their culture insists on marriage and family and progeny. But the males my age are finding it extremely difficult to find a girlfriend and find um, a wife of their own culture and social background. It's so difficult them, for them because they're just, the numbers aren't there. There are so many men of the population, but the women, they're just not there. Just not there. So now let's let's go macro scale. Let's 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 zoom out of Earth. Let's zoom. So so just keep that in mind, right? Now zoom out of Earth and look down at Earth and think, if you will, like of a a timeline. Like if you could scroll back and forth along the timeline, 1920s, 1960s, 1980s, and so on. If you could scroll along that, scroll along to that era where so many infant girls were being 
discarded or killed. So there's no, there aren't any infant babies. But the number of souls, reincarnating souls coming through to earth from wherever are still looking for bodies to come into, to uh, fetal bodies to, to, um, to come into and to be born as a human. The number and the the number and the, the type or uh, who they are hasn't changed from the whole of history. They're just there's this constant cycle. So the last generation died, and then there's a new cycle of souls coming in to be born. And now you're coming in. They're all coming in. And in the 19, let's just say 1920s, 1930s, early on in the century, let's just say a ballpark area there coming in and you're a soul let's just say you're a soul and you you have you're a soul who's lived maybe 50 times before maybe you've been a female 32 times out of 18 lives i mean uh 32 times out of 50 and the other 18 times you were a male but you were a female 32 times and a male 18 times but you actually feel more you feel more comfortable as a female you feel more comfortable being born into a woman's body you're you're familiar with the roles that you generally play you you know you're good at certain skills you know you like to do certain things and you just feel more comfortable to be the woman anyway so they, but but there's lots of others. There's the, the ones that would prefer to be born male and then there's ones who would prefer to be born female. Let's just say it's like maybe 50, 55. It's even these split souls coming in. And let's just say they're looking at the earth. looking at Here's the earth here. And they're looking at the earth and they're sort of, you know, like an, uh, swiping the earth around, kind of looking for matches where they can be born into that human there that human if they want to be born at this particular time they have a, a few certain amount of choices and if you look at that time in history early early uh, early uh, decades of this century i'm going to turn this light off it's not really um there you go of of this century um Coming in, and the, it's evenly split with the souls, and they're all looking at, at where, where they can go. But there is probably about 60% of the available human fetuses on the earth at that time are male. Let's just say 60% of the available human fetuses to be born in, who are in human mums at that time, are male. They have male genitalia. But there's still souls coming through coming through who have female largely female characteristics they could have gone the more male way but they're well, they've become feminine anyway so people the souls are still coming through and they have to choose bodies but there's a lack there's an extreme lack of female bodies female fetuses to be born into and so imagine if you're you're a soul and you feel like okay this is my time to be alive again I'm due in this year. Uh, I would, uh, if I had to choose a culture, I'd like to choose the culture that I was last in or the one I'm most familiar with. But if I had to choose anywhere else, um, I don't know. Uh, and if they look like in Asia, especially in China at that time, they're going to find so few female fetuses to be born into. So maybe they're just going to go, okay, well, there's there's not a lot on offer here for me. All these other ones, all the, the, the few here are being taken up really quickly. So let me look somewhere else. Jesus Christ, okay, let me look somewhere else. So they flip around and they, they find girl fetuses somewhere else. But what does a soul do? What does a soul do if you're supposed to be born at a particular time? All the female fetuses are taken up. But there are a few male fetuses there for you to choose from. Well... Maybe you choose a male. It's not forever. I, I still get a chance to live and learn lessons and, and practice things and become good at things and uh, uh, help the world and try and learn with, along with everybody else. 
Fine, give me a male suit. Give me a male suit. I'll make do with what I can. It'll still be interesting either way. Okay, fine. Give me a male suit. Um, give me Mexico, Central Mexico. There's a, there's there's a male. I'll, I'll go there, or I'll I'll go to a male fetus in China. Either way, fine, whatever. Now I'm just thinking from my vantage point, right? But maybe I mean, if you had to get the soul stories of all the other different souls out there. There's going to be a million and one different histories and choices and things going on. But if you think about it, if you have, just say, you're pretty evenly split, probably souls coming through, but there's a lack of female fetuses, what are you going to choose? You're going to choose a male fetus. To me, this would explain why a little boy, this would explain why a little boy from Yan will grow up and then as he's hitting puberty, he will just start to feel so out of place because his heart, his heart and his soul is molded in a slightly different way. It's a different, he's, he's lived more lifetimes as a female before. And maybe he would have chosen a female body if he could, but he had no choice. There wasn't anything else on offer. There was just the male or couple male bodies to choose from and he chose this one. I think this is what's been happening. I think this is why we have such a climate, a, a period now where we have so many people who are so lost and feeling out of place and uncomfortable with the body they were born in. I think this might be why it's happened. I hope this helps. Um, it's just a hypothesis. It's just a guess. Uh, make of it what you will. Uh, you can add your own ideas uh, down in the comments section. Yes, happy to hear it.